Hey folks, Steve here with another Axis Empires Ultimate Edition Tatalakrieg Great Crusade scenario video for you today. Um, sorry if this may be getting a little bit longer to get out to you. Um, I've got a, a hectic schedule over the next couple of days, so I don't know when I'm going to get this video out or the next one. Um, uh, so that may be a little bit of a challenge, but we should be able to keep pretty good pace uh as we go through. Um, having covered uh, five turns last video, this one we may only cover four, I'm not sure. Um, it's going to depend on where where we get to, how long the video gets. Uh, so you'll see it in the in the title of the video. Um, me right now, we'll, we'll feel it out. I want to mention a couple of things. Um, there was a previous comment about uh, uh, the number of convoys in the Western Med, um, having accounted for the advice given previously when I had more than one regular troop convoy in the North Atlantic and correcting for that mistake, um, or at least adjusting my markers accordingly so that I could do what I needed to do there. Um, last video we had stuff here. Those are all escort troop convoys. They had been converted uh, in our plethora of support markers for increased sea lift that we used to attack Genoa. And because this was asked in the comment section, and I just want to show you why did I pick Genoa and not Rome directly, or I guess what I could have, you know, I could have landed like here and then followed up with attacks there or whatever. I liked Genoa because it is a port. There is no city marker there. Uh, there is no city icon now. Is there a city icon in the previous versions of the game? I don't know. I guess I have to go look. Um, could this be errata? Is this supposed to be a city? Well, it could be. I don't know. But but I'm playing the game as I see it, and I don't have any idea otherwise. So Genoa seemed like a perfect place to drop. You know, behind uh, enemy lines, it's a port. So once we get the port, we can get our beach marker back. Um, and so on and so forth. So uh, though we had a, you know, we were... We were kind of at risk here because if the Germans could get back in there, uh, then, um, well, that's something they had to worry about. Uh, but it, it's also well defended by these mountain passes on most sides of the hex. Uh, so as we, you know, we made our way in here, it was a good place to sit once we got in. Um, so there you go. That there was somebody was asking in the comments, Max, uh, Mark, you guys were, were saying, hey, what about the shift for the city? Well, there is no city. Uh, there is no city. And so um, that was critically important to, to the moves that we made and what we tried to do there. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's uh, let's get back to the rest of our journey here. Um, so we're in winter. Uh, we have snow. So snow certainly does a lot of, to limit our capability to operate, particularly in some areas of the map that I'm kind of interested in in making hot, uh, but it's too cold, so we're not going to do that. Um, so this will be a more kind of slower moving turn, uh, setup turns potentially, um, though I'll certainly look, you know, look for opportunities. Um, I'm not sure how winter turns really go in this game, so that That'll be, this is going to be interesting to see, you know, what I can try to achieve in other games, like Blood and Flames, which I make constant comparisons. Uh, they do tend to be slow, you know, like, they play fast, they're fast turns, because you can't do as much. So, repositioning units, um, attacks usually aren't worth it, unless you've got something surprising planned, uh, at least in a, in a northern temperate, temp, uh, you know, weather area like Europe you tend not to do a whole lot of craziness. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's talk very quickly about like strategy intentions right now. Um, the allies need to shift their logistics marker here. And this is their, uh, you know, the initial logistics marker they started with that's set up here. Um, in the season change of winter, I can take it off. This goes to the delay box. We're going to end up doing that. So I'll just do that now. Um, when it's their turn. Uh, well, I guess I should wait until their turn to do it. I don't know. But we're going to take it off. It goes in the delay box. If we have pretty good die rolls, we should expect to get the logistics marker back. Um, 
uh, hopefully in the spring, uh, hopefully in the spring. And then what I'd probably want to do with this guy is stick him, you know, in Rome, probably. Um, and then that's just a nice, safe place to bring in additional reinforcements and funnel them north. Um, so we have like one, you know, one uh, claw, you know, sticking this way. The other pincer will eventually come this way uh, because when we eventually get to Operation Shingle, we're going to get the Shafe uh, Supreme Headquarters of Allied, I forget what the E is, um, force. Uh, Shafe Logistics Marker is going to come in eventually, and we'll probably stick that sucker somewhere over here. Um, and once that's in place, right, we won't, we will not be as reliant on sea lift, though we'll still use it, um, to get forces into Europe to continue fighting into Germany. So those are, those are the important parts of the logistic, logistics markers, um, where, you know, you can place reinforcements there as long as you get, you know, if they're placed appropriately and the logistics marker itself is in supply, um, you can just put, uh, you know, within stacking limit, right, um, reinforcements on the logistics marker. So um, that's, that can be very strong. It's a very strong capability for the Allies because, boy, it's a pain in the butt trying to get all your convoys the way you want, and you have to invest a lot of markers in the sea lift if you're going to do a lot of movement. Um, and, you know, ugh, you know let's, let's get those logistics markers. Let's get a good home base set up. And we've had that um, for our intents in North Africa, you know, being able to get units here, move them over to here, get in the good port, you know, port stacking so that we could send stuff over here or send stuff over here. Uh, the only, the only thing will be, you know, we'll lose access to the logistics marker for that amount of time to move it, but we, we, we do need to move it. Um, moving, or rather reinforcing in North Africa does not really help us as much as it was before um, because now if, if you know we've got a lot of guys in Italy uh, to reinforce them still requires a lot of shipping I'd rather if there's going to be a slog in the Alps us be able to send those replacement uh, units uh, from a, a much shorter distance and uh, achievable to get into into place either within a turn or a part of a turn so that that's something we got to think about in terms of the big logistics thing um, I will say I like that. I like the thought that I'm like, okay, all right, well, now that I'm, we're, we're well in Italy, we're taking care of all this, we're going to, we're going to get our logistics, we've got to move our logistics hub, uh, you know, closer to the front, we're going to go to Rome, we're going to move into Rome, and uh, continue to manage the war effort there as we prepare for other landings elsewhere on the map. Very, very fun to kind of think through that. That's fun. Um, all right, so let's talk about cards for a quick second. Um, we'll talk about the German card first. This is the, historically the card choice. Uh, production directive, jet fighters. They get just two steps. Uh, those two steps probably going to be going into southern Germany to help defend the mountains. Um, almost guaranteed at this point. Uh, and then in the political events segment, we're going to uh, get to roll a die. And we're going to get to do this um, because of the way that the... i got to find my sequence of play. Ah, come on. I'm fighting with all my stuff on the table. Um, they're going to get to do this both turns of winter. So we're going to roll a die. Um, we're going to... Uh, you know, add some die roll modifiers, and it's either going to lead to probably either allied bombing, so nothing, or production success, which would give them some jet fighters, which is a very interesting result. Um, or we roll on the directive table, and when I look to go see what's that, um, we would be rolling here, which this is really for the first time we're, we're going to start using these tables that we roll on on the player aid chart that will point us to a, a reference lookup in the Totaler Creed rulebook. So we'll say like Volksturm. Well, what does the Volksturm do? We would go look that up and implement it. I think that gives us more steps. I'm not, I can't remember, because I have read it. Um, failure command would be 
would be bad for them if that's what they get. If it if you apply the failure on the axis, uh, that's that would be very bad. Uh, special weapon success would be great. Um, you see all these different different things, and it's I guess I, I'm not even sure that having the die roll modifier because the axis is doing well or something necessarily makes the results on those tables always better. Um, I, I think it just varies on the table. So we're going to have that. Um, so we could get some interesting, cool stuff out of it. Uh, we'll see. And then, God, I have a hard time picking these cards up on my plexiglass. Their spring card will be uh, the German spring card, meaning their pending card for later, will be material shortages. You can see what this does is it's going to add a number of units to the delay box, so we won't get them right away. We get another HQ. Uh, we get uh, some a really strong defense unit, a 162. It's interesting to see. Um, and we get uh, a 653 SS uh, tank army unit. Um, so uh, pretty good. Now, this is the Western version of the card. I think the regular campaign game version of this card adds a lot more stuff, but a lot of that stuff is going to the east front. Um, and then we set this card aside. We're going to have material shortages, uh, which is going to force us to roll uh, on this card table here. And really, none of those are particularly good for the Germans. Um, they, they're they going to get a couple of replacement steps, but like, I don't think we can even get military takeover. I'd have to go, I'm going to have to look at the DRMs and see what applies. Um, military takeover would be very bad for the Axis, um, but anything else, like a plot failed, would be fine. Failure of command would be unfortunate, so really there's a, there's a couple of things, like this, this feels like a, an odd card, right? Like there's good stuff coming out of the card, there's bad stuff coming out of the card. Well, the reason why this is an important card for the Axis is that there are other cards they're pretty good that depend on you having played this, I think. So this is one of those things you have to take some some lumps, take some unfortunate circumstances to get to some better stuff. Um, so that's the German card situation for the next, next bit. Allies. We talked a little bit about this before the Eureka conference. So apply Pacific Commitment. Uh, we'll have to look at that. Um, then we're going to flip... Uh, Western minor country production to its plus two side, which, uh, yeah, sure enough, there's a plus two. You might not be able to see that with the focus. Come on, yeah, well, it's plus two on the other side, so we'll get we'll get that, which will be useful. Um, I guess we can boost French, um, boost French production, um, or you know uh, maybe other minor countries if we can liberate them. Um, and then what? Uh, we get some additional uh, air support markers, basically, into the delay box. We would expect to get them pretty soon, and that'll actually be a huge help because uh, we're going to need a lot of air for the for the campaigns to come. We'll put it that way, right? Uh, and then we get a nice set of replacements, uh, some of which, you know, because we we won't have our logistics marker in place, I will probably plug into Britain, and we'll, we'll have a big build up there. Um, and then we're going to roll on the conference table, which, uh, when I look at the conference table, this can lead to, I'm using the German player, mark, uh, player aid sheet right now, but I don't think it matters. Conference table, um, well, it might matter. I'll, I'll have to double check, but, uh, we could get military aid. We could get Germany supporting nationalists, um, but, but other things like, uh, ally support resistance would be nice. I think that may give us partisan markers, uh, which would be helpful. Um, so we got that. Uh, and requirements, the commit, U.S. commitment level is two. Yeah, we, we, we've got that. Um, the next card, the pending card for the Allies, then, is Operation Shingle. Uh, this is a two blitz marker card, so, so pretty good. We're going to get uh, that Shafe uh, Logistics, S-H-A-E-F. Logistics marker, we're going to get uh, an additional British HQ, we're going to get some additional British units that are decently strong, the U.S. will get an HQ, we're going to get more uh, U.S. units, some that are build-up units, which we've been lacking generally on the board, there's like one built-up American unit on the board, well this will give us more, so as we prepare for the big slog 
in France will we'll have some strong army units to leverage, and we get a boatload, a boatload of replacements. Makes us a pretty good card. Two blitz markers. That's really good. Um, <clears throat> not as much as three, but two is still pretty good. Now, Operation Shingle, I mean, I guess if I show the, the flavor text there, allies capture Rome and prepare for a major offensive. Uh, so the historical narrative would say you're using those blitz markers uh, in support of uh, taking Rome and kind of fighting around here, and then you're, you're getting the benefit of those delay box re replacements and reinforcements, all that good stuff to prepare for summer, and we all know what summer will be. Um, for us, uh, when we get to spring, that's actually gonna present an interesting uh, interesting opportunity because we won't need to worry about spending blitz markers in taking Rome. We've already sort of done that, right? And we've already got a, a pretty good grasp in Northern Italy. We're actually doing pretty darn well uh, in Italy. So I could see us using a blitz marker to continue to try to uh, grind on the Germans, maybe try to trip them, maybe try to get a breakthrough. Probably not going to happen, but I don't mind, you know, having a go of it. Like we've got to keep kind of forcing the issue in Italy and force the Germans to spend resources there. Because um, we're going to have, again, that other pincer, you know, two, two daggers going this way. Um but the blitz marker, you know, the other blitz marker, right? Because we might only, you know, there's only so much space here. We'd only be using one blitz marker. Gives us some opportunities to try some different things. Now, we got to be careful. We don't want to disrupt um, our support marker capability for uh, for Overlord and, and getting into France. Like, we've got to watch out that we don't put ourselves in a bad situation there in terms of timing. But we may just have enough time to uh, try to work on another area that would allow us to affect the game state. And I'm thinking, because we've, we've done so well in Italy, we've kind of bought ourselves a little bit of time. I am thinking of, and it, if, when the time comes, guys, I'm going to adjust the camera angle because when we were talking about down here, it was easy to have my camera on its extended legs of its stand, uh, where in the past I've, I've shortened the legs and put the camera stand right on the table. I'm going to do that again uh, as we move north uh, and show the action because it'll look better. Um, but I think we can start talking about going into Norway. Because uh, we're going to have a spare blitz marker. Um on the turn on the two turns of shingle and and we'll certainly use one in italy might as well right but we're gonna have an extra one um that would be redundant in italy because there's not that much space to worry about so we can uh can think about getting into uh norway now we wouldn't you know i wouldn't i'm not saying this out loud on my axis side of my brain but like hey why not right we've got we got plenty of units up here right now. We're going to get a lot more. Why don't we send a couple of core over and kind of do the reverse of what the, the Germans did, right? Get some forces over there and smash our way into Oslo. And I think we would have the capability to do it. We could do, you know, one, one set just getting into the port, in which case we'd hold that port. And then we would uh, continue to move in and move forward and attack Oslo. And the Germans really aren't going to be in a good spot um, because uh, even if we, you know, said they had like a supply marker, uh, depending on how we would want to do this, um, we could probably out support the Germans in the North Sea, make their port uh, not an open port. Um, so getting reinforcements into Oslo would be a problem. Uh, again, Narvik is off map, so I'm not terribly worried about that at the moment. Um, and, and I'm going to leave it out of the game consideration here. Sorry. Uh, just going to be easier to do it that way. Um, play, the, play, play the scenario as the scenario is stated for the moment. But we could get, we, there's only a single step in Oslo right now, right? To commit too much in Oslo, maybe elsewhere, you know, um, would be a problem. I'd, I would have converted 
the Oslo infantry to uh, a fortress, but my mind as the German player is very much, hey, we've got a lot going on right now. We've got a lot to prepare for. This Oslo thing is kind of secondary, and only the Allies right now can really dedicate resources to it because of their support marker capability. So it, it makes sense to try, um, and if I get it, that is a whole strategic marker that the Germans are down uh, down again, and that's going to be important. We're going to want to clear it if we can. I don't think historically the Allies did this. Um, they just It wasn't part of the timetable, but we bought ourselves some time by performing that Genoa invasion and kind of, you know, quickly making the situation untenable for the Italians that we're, we're not slogging too much in Italy. We, we've got a little bit of extra time to play with. So I, I want to look at doing that. Now, we can't do that until the spring um, because the winter weather is a problem, but uh, we can certainly try uh, and see what happens in the spring, you know, in the spring terms itself. So I'm going to be thinking about that throughout this, um, throughout this set of winter turns. But anyway, with that said, I'm going to go play through the first winter turn for the Germans, and we'll go from, from there. I'll do check-ins along the way, at least until we get to that next spring turn, because we're already 20 minutes into this video, guys. Crazy. It's crazy. All right. We'll be back. Um, here we are at the end of the November, December turn, uh, right as we are going to go into 1944. You're going to notice something a little odd here. We have an Italian unit right there. Um, I had forgotten at the end of the September, October turn, um, and I only just corrected it now and, and made some adjustments having had to make those corrections. We actually had triggered a conditional event at the end of September, October, um, or one, you know, once we had evicted uh, the Germans out of uh, Bologna, or they had pulled back, and I can't, I guess I maybe I should have thought about that, and maybe not pulled that German unit back. I don't, I don't know. Um, but uh, because the Allies had control of all the cities in Italy, you'll notice I, I don't have somebody in Naples now because this past turn I moved them, moved them north. Um, at the what should have happened at the end of September October was we were not only in control of Rome and you know we had previously triggered uh, avalanche we had controlled all the cities of Italy as the allies in large part because we had invaded in the north up here and managed to grab the northern Italy cities that from the historical storyboard the Germans were in control of till I mean basically almost the end of the war I think if I remember right um, I could be wrong about that. Um, but so late in the game that, you know, for a long time, you just have, you know, fighting in northern Italy and, in you know, these, you know, far north reaches here, just grinding, uh, fighting going on there. Now, um, because that's not the case, what we triggered was the Axis Minor Country Liberation Rules, which is when the Western Allies control all the cities, um, you, you kind of do like what the Avalanche event does, uh, except you do it for everything, and the minor country becomes a Western allied minor country. Um, and so uh, we basically conquered and liberated Italy. And so now they're, they're on our side. The Italians are, are on our side. So when we had the... Um, uh, minor production for winter, uh, we would actually have gotten a couple of steps uh, that I originally thought I, I was, I was going to miss out on, that I wasted, because the French can't really build anything right now, and they're the only other minor of consequence. Um, but if, it, if Italy was a Western minor country for that first winter turn, uh, when we get replacement points, the minor production marker would have allowed uh, would have allowed two steps of minor country units to be built. And so we, we have built some pro-ally Italians right here in Milan. Um, I have otherwise, in the last turn, as the Allies uh, pushed the Germans back, we are now solidly fighting in the mountains here. Um, and it's going to be tough going, uh, even in the best of weather. Uh, it's going to be tough going there. So 
I think you know the the Italian front, the border of of Germany there is kind of, you know, reaching, uh, I guess, a stopping point now. I don't know what it looks like to try to go, you know, one, two, three, you know, go up here. Like, do we do that? Can we do that? And do like it's on the West map. No joke, it is. So, um, are we going to have to have the Germans? put replacements over here and try to hold there who knows um that's kind of the the trick that we're having to to resolve um that we're gonna have to figure out uh so yeah um right some scary potentially scary things are happening uh in the italian theater for the, for the germans on their turn by the way just due to the mud and now the snow uh that we've been experiencing they they haven't been able to do much. They used the snow to try to pull units back. They did get attacked uh, and, and sort of, you know, they lost one unit. HQ support, though, uh, kept it from being a, a route. And now we're, you know, we're just getting into this position here uh, before we go into the second winter turn, the last winter turn. Um, I don't, I can't imagine a whole lot is going to be different other than uh, I could see maybe trying to rush a uh a unit over into vienna and we'll probably do that at the very least um somehow we'll, we'll get a unit over into vienna hook or by crook um yeah so let me go play through the next winter turn not a whole lot of action uh, and in fact neither side really played any support markers um all kind of being held in reserve minor attacks shaping operations um, because the Germans want to ha try to have as many support markers as they can for the spring and summer, really likewise for the Allies, and we're, we're going to do that to quote-unquote surprise invasion of Norway, potentially. Um, so the Germans are just hoping they can get enough of their own markers on the board. Um, we did uh, roll for the delay box, and I'll, I'll just point out that the Allies, for their support markers, did great. For all the Italian units that are coming in, from the delay box to go into the Western Allied Force pool. Uh, I rolled like fives and sixes for all of them. So really weird luck, like pretty good, reasonable luck on the Allies for their support markers, the minus two. The Italian units, which benefit from the minus two, uh, to come in, uh, rolled the worst that I could roll. So it'll still be a little while before those Italian delay strike units go into our force pool. The, the one nice thing is we can continue to build uh, Italian units in Italy to just kind of help garrison and help project force. Um, the other thing that is going to be important uh, for us is that, um, uh, as it relates to this, uh, we don't have to hold Naples. Like, we can actually, if we wanted to, uh, leave Rome and Naples uh, and stuff empty because they're just friendly allied. I mean, we might need to stick a unit in there to maintain a, a base, uh, for air or naval basing, but we can kind of leave some of these areas empty uh, should we project beyond Italy. We can, we can kind of not worry about garrisoning it because we've re functionally replaced the government of Italy with a pro-allied government, is essentially what's happening, I think. Um, so, so we've got that. Um, I do want to point out that in the... Uh, what we ended up with was a directive on the access card that eventually led to uh, some neutral influencing and the Germans knocked the pro-Western marker off of Sweden, um, which is just barely on the West map. So that was gonna probably affect the final, final victory calculation. Now the Germans have kind of staved that off for the moment. Um, the Allies, meanwhile, uh, got from their conference card supporting um, rebels, basically partisans, so we have a partisan base in our uh, force pool that we'll look to leverage uh, when we can. So uh, we'll go get, <clears throat> excuse me, start getting into the second winter turn. Really, spring is going to be more important. Okay, here we are at the beginning of spring. So winter has passed. Um, we'll try to cover these next two spring videos as briefly as I can, but I, I think we'll probably run into some interesting stuff going on. A um, couple of things. One, the Germans did get their uh, jet jet fighter production result 
uh, in their politics event phase, uh, political events phase. And so they got an extra interceptor, and by golly, they got lucky on the uh, the delay box, which we didn't have Allied bombers in to delay it. It rolled a one, so the Germans are are feeling actually okay. They now, for this turn, have four airplane, you know, air unit markers. They've got an interceptor. They've got uh, scratch that. They've got two interceptors. Um, so, I mean, all things considered, the Germans actually have a fair amount, but they've been reluctant to, to use anything, right? Uh, just the weather has been bad. Um, and then it's a question of, can they, you know, what, how, how much do you try to send in, right? Um, to stop any allied activity. So the big question, the, the, the German part of my brain won't know is, do they try to do anything to, uh, prohibit an invasion of Norway, because if I count up the markers, just so you figure like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six defensive markers to contest that could stop or inhibit uh, uh, some sort of naval invasion uh, or a, you know, whatever invasion of Norway, the allies would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 on the attack. So even while we feel like we've got pretty good capability, um, I think the reality uh, of it's going to be more like, hey, we've got, um, we, we've, I think we're going to get into Norway somehow. And it almost doesn't matter how we choose to do it. Um, but again, we're, we're, we don't know that yet. We don't know that. So let's talk about uh, what else has occurred. Um, with the shift into spring, the U.S. commitment level has increased. So we've moved the U.S. commitment level up to three, um, and now we've moved that marker out to the next spring. Uh, we're in 45. Shortly before the end of the game, it will go to full full max. The only differences between commitment level two and three uh, is that the Western Delay DRM improves by one. So it's a minus three now, which makes it, you know, pretty pretty likely that most of the time our die rolls, our support markers are going to come right back. So we can, even this spring, I mean, it's like, how much, how much do we spend in our support markers um, before D-Day? Because we want D-Day. We need to hit hard with D-Day. Um, you know, what, what's our, uh, how hard can we hit Norway or to denude the German uh, markers, and, and that, that's certainly a, a thought process, right, as the Germans, if I start to see, like, oh, they're deploying stuff in the North Sea already, and I've got to block that, I've got to block that, then going, oh, man, like, do I block that anymore, because um, the way that this is going to be going, uh, we are uh, very likely going to see those support markers for the Germans probably not come back necessarily in time for D-Day, so it could be a distraction for the Germans to even try to stave off Norway. If they don't know what they're doing, right, they don't know what the Allies are up to, are the Allies trying to make a spring landing in France? I mean, who knows? It, that, that's conceivable, um, and if that's the case, then, uh, you know, maybe they, they do need to defend hard. You just don't know, and I guess that, in an opposed game, that's where this would matter, right? You would say, okay, well, hey, I'm placing this in the North Sea. And your opponent's going, well, why are you doing that? You say, well, I'm, mm, I'm not telling you. Um, and so you do the, the markers, and it could just be a feint in some ways, right? If you've got the delay marker advantage uh, or delay DRM advantage, you might, you know, throw a couple markers out there. At this point, the Allies are going to get those markers back next turn very likely, and the Germans may not, you know, they might get lucky, but they probably won't get them back right away. Um, and that's just going to benefit you. So you're really putting the screws on the Germans because they, they, you know, they they are flush with support markers right now, but they really can't afford to do much else with them. So you say, like, is the game going to be won or lost in Norway, or is the game going to be won or lost in France and Germany? Well, it's obviously going to be France and Germany. So the Germans probably probably won't uh, contest too hardly the Norwegian invasion, in which case the Allies can get away with spending whatever support markers they probably need make it happen. See, it's crazy. It's crazy to talk about. In a solitaire game, like, you know, it feels a little bit like um, uh, Princess Bride, right? You know, uh, 
I know that you knew that you'd switch the cups of the Iacane powder, that kind of thing's going on. Because um, I'm just me. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about the cards. So uh, the cards being played, the Germans are going to have the material shortage. We talked about that before. Uh, certainly don't want a military takeover. We're going to get some cool stuff uh, later down the way. Um, will be important. You can see we did start to flank around and try to defend our weird open flank. Uh, those reinforcements will kind of help us do that. We need to continue to look at um, you know, where, where can we properly defend? Uh, because at this point, the Allies are doing so well, we're going to start to attack southern France from the Italian border uh, at this point. Um, so <laughs> we, we got to worry about that. Uh, we've got to worry about that. So um, very, very likely are, are going to be potentially an issue um, for the Germans, no matter what. They're going to start to feel pressure uh, in too many places. Uh, but they will have this card. Their next card, and I'm just using the historical choices again, going to be uh, the weapons, which um, will get some additional units in the force pool. Uh, and, well, who knows what else uh, ultimately. So um, we'll we'll see where that goes. I'm just using, again, the historical narrative. Would I change the card selection at this point? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, we need to pick our cards carefully. Uh, and I'm willing to just ride this, the historical card selection. Uh, we've already talked about Shingle, right? We're going to uh, get some other cool stuff in the Allied um, Force Pool. We're going to eventually get the Shape Logistics Marker that will come in handy. We're going to get a whole boatload of other stuff. Um, what's going to be really good is uh, we'll be able to get some of these steps into Italy, uh, I think. i got to check the... Let's see. Yes, logistics is before replacements, so we're going to be able to replace our other logistics marker in, uh, probably in Bologna at this point. I have to double check the rules on where we can put it, but we, we could put all these steps um, in, uh, in Italy if we wanted to back up the front there, and that could actually be uh, well, not all these steps. We could put a lot of steps down there, and that could be a huge help. Um, we're going to get a couple blitz markers. All that's really great. The next card up is, in fact, Overlord. You can see two blitz markers uh, per turn. We're going to see an additional USHQ, some additional units, a uh, bunch of replacements. And then um, this will be the interesting one if we can achieve it. Uh, we need to get a city or port in France, which uh, we're going to probably get that either down here in the south or via the landings proper. So, uh, you know, the Allied plan is progressing, and we'll see kind of what else goes on here. Um, so, okay. Uh, other thing I should point out, uh, I, I, I did not talk about it yet. We shifted the victory marker down one. So the uh, EMSV value on the turn track for this turn is a three, meaning the, the Soviets have taken back a strategic hex on the east front. And we're also counting the fact that Italy uh, is now Western Allied country and we control Rome. So knocking two off the starting value, which I believe counted out to be seven, it's now plus five in the German favor, which knocks them down to one VP. That will affect their delay marker uh, di uh, die rolls. It will affect um, uh, it will affect their uh, political DRMs for when that matters. Um, so generally, uh, it, it's a good thing for the allies at the strategic level. Again, the, the delayed DRMs have gotten effectively worse and worse for the Germans, and that's only going to going to continue um, at this point. I've still not used our allied bomber uh, to create um, a devastation marker on a German hex yet. I'm wanting to hold that in reserve until we are probably well on our way to victory and just sort of capstone that, uh, ideally, especially when the Germans are low on support markers. Whenever that can occur and we've got a clean shot, we'll, we'll probably take it. Um, all right, I'm going to play through this first spring turn. We'll show the aftermath of that, and then we'll finish up with the last spring, uh, the last turn of spring in 1944. Okay, uh, here we are heading into the mud spring turn. Um, and boy, I, you know, I'm looking at the situation and I'm going, I don't even really know if 
we need to do D-Day. I think we are now opening a clear and present danger front in the south. Um, we are trying to, to churn and burn our way through the defensive line in the Alps. Um, it's slow going, and we're not getting quite where we want to be yet, but it the damage is being applied. Um, we did take Marseille back, so... I guess I, I guess France never really like Vichy, Vichy. France is Vichy, and we still have some of the French force pool that we can add on to the map over time. But we have like we have liberated Marseille, I believe. I'm trying to think about like what, like now that it's uh, not occupied, we can leave it open behind us here, uh, and start to build up French units behind us um, as we continue forward. I, I think we can do that, and I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. And we're going to have some opportunities here to turn some of these American units around uh, into um, multi-step units. Uh, we might even just start shipping reinforcements directly into Marseille rather than land in Normandy. And I, the reason I say that is, when you look at the map, I said, boy, I, I spent a lot of time turning uh, fortresses, you know, turning units into fortresses along this Atlantic wall. But our success in Genoa, northern Italy, and, and the flipping of Italy just gives us a really great holding spot. And now we, we're down here that, like, the Germans are going to have to do something. Like, they're in deep trouble here. They can't, they can't expect to hold... France very long. I'm not even sure ultimately how we how we do this. Um, but you'll notice uh, you know, I, I, uh, that I had a lot of focus here. Why am I doing that? Didn't I talk about Norway? Well, I did use blitz markers over here, and we didn't do a naval invasion, but I'll show you why. In the, um, with the placement of our partisan marker, we actually got a partisan marker, right, from the, from the previous season. Well, I stuck that sucker right here in rough terrain in Norway, and we're reactivating Norway at the end of the turn, and we get to place its reserve unit there. And so now the Germans kind of have an issue. Um, they could try to knock out that partisan base, um, but we don't really need that base to do much because here, here's what we're going to do. In the coming turns here, as we start looking at uh, future activities, we're going to step back that's an allied controlled port and we'll start shipping a few units into Norway this way and uh, start to make that happen but more slowly so rather than an immediate flipping of Norway via invasion we're gonna we're gonna trickle units in there we're gonna take care of it um, we'll, we'll probably end up clearing Norway over time but now we don't need to worry as much about uh, creating a beachhead because we're gonna make that an open port um, and we'll start to uh, get allies in there to, to clear Oslo. So that partisan marker ended up being a huge deal, really shifting our priorities uh, and allowing us to operate elsewhere. And I think Germany's feeling incredibly nervous because now, like, what can, what can they do? Um, I'll have to look to see if I can break down fortresses. Can we start to pivot and contain, but, you know, wherever, whatever we do, the Allies can always drop behind us. Like the Germans are in an untenable position, we may simply have to fall back to Fran or uh, to Germany proper, like immediately. We we may not have a choice here. We can't hold the coast. We might have to simply, um, uh, you know, dig in somewhere over here and try to do something. I I don't know what. It's going to be tough going. Um, so we'll take care of this mud turn. Now, it being mud means that we're not going to have a huge amount of movement or anything like that. Probably not even attacks, um, but it will be, you know, very movement oriented here as we try to figure out how to stop the Allies from stomping all over the Germans that remain in southern France and cutting off forces in northern France um, to the point where, you know, we're going to at will invade the continent and invade Germany. And they're probably not a whole lot they're going to be able to do to stop us. I mean, what's to stop us from trying to uh, land in Bremen, right? I mean, practically nothing. Um, it makes me wonder why maybe that move isn't done more. I'm not sure what, you know, 
maybe you have a lot of German units sitting right here, but I think he could land and then start to rip up the Germans pretty harshly here. So um, looking very bad for the Germans, and we'll play through this turn and we'll see where we end up. I will say um, in the delay uh, in the previous turn, as we were playing placing air units here, the Germans, I, I did decide to try to contest it because I didn't know what all was going to happen. They, you know, the, the situation is bad enough as it is. So they had to spend something, but the Allies uh, just had too many markers. Uh, we did block the American and British bombers from increasing the delay, uh, which was going to be catastrophically bad for the Germans. In the delay, we had tons of units in the delay box from both reinforcement cards uh, or the option cards. Um, the Allies pretty much came away with that clean with a lot of stuff coming in either this turn or the next turn. Um, and the Germans much more spread out. So I, I'm just going to say it, guys. I think the Germans are pretty darn doomed. I mean, they're doomed anyway. But I think in the framing of this uh, campaign, the Germans are, are in deep trouble. I think I could have, I don't know. I, I guess I, I certainly could have played some, some things better. I think the game-winning move was here, and the mistake was moving those Germans too far forward, not defending Genoa with stronger units. Genoa turns out to be a really lovely place to invade if, if it's not properly covered. And we're really unhinging the whole axis control via the med. Um, so I need to start thinking about sea lift and, and all this to start getting more and more units down there. We might even put our Shafe logistics marker in Marseille uh, or something, or maybe, you know, somewhere up here if we can get it. And then we're just, you know, I mean, we're, we're just in there. Um, capturing any other ports is just gravy at that point. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to play through this last turn, show the aftermath, and we'll close up the video. Okay, so things are developing. Um, we did end up having to get a beachhead into Norway because the Germans advanced forward, which meant that they, these guys couldn't back up, and they left a detachment in Oslo because they do have detachments in their force pool. Um, so that kind of forced our hand. The, the Allies did uh, shave off some support markers to drop uh, begin dropping some units into a port, but now we control that port, so it's going to take some time, but we're still going to probably get into Oslo before game end. Um, possibly. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll have to continue to ship units over there um, as it happens, but we're, we're going to be uh, we're going to be making that progress, I guess. That's, that's the key thing, making progress. Um, and I totally forgot to do that. You didn't see that because it's all slightly off camera, but there was um, some slight movement that we were making uh, with some extant units in uh, Italy to come into southern France. So um, all our guys in Britain are kind of fi trying to figure out, like, hey, man, are we are we going to be going to northern France, or are we just going to ship into Marseille and continue to, to work? Uh, the Germans are trying. Uh, here. So here's my big mistake. You can't break down fortresses. So uh, we're just going to bypass these probably, right? Who cares about the Atlantic Wall? Baby, we're, we're marching our way from the south. Um, no reason not to at this point, uh, so, which is funny. So I spent all this time. This is, I guess, this is player response to player response, right? I spent a lot of time putting these fortresses in place, using up steps, making them immobile. And now as the Allies, I'm capitalizing on the shift. And saying, well, I'm going to go where you ain't, and we're going to overrun the south and go that way. And that might just work out very well for us, um, as it happens. So we're, we're going to see how that goes. Um, probably going to look at some landings near Bremen at some point. Um, I really don't see why not. Uh, so we'll have to look at that. Um, but still, we're, we're making some advancement. Now, the mud was tough. We did try a couple of attacks. Uh, and, and despite the mud, we were able to take a hex here. Um, and so we're, we're pressing up through the mountains, slow going. Uh, we've advanced beyond Marseille. There's nothing down here to endanger Marseille, really. So it's kind of a safe play to move these guys forward, which I did. Uh, crossing over from, uh, from Italy and... Um, We've reduced that fortress a bit, and we'll, we'll likely do that some more. Um, 
Here's the funny thing, though. We got to the material. We, we got to the delay phase, right? Allies got most of their stuff back, all clean and easy. We we're sitting pretty happy with support markers. The Germans have two air markers left uh, in their support pool right now, which is not going to be enough to really stop a concerted Allied effort um, wherever they decide to go. But here's the funny thing. So we drew we, we had the material shortage marker uh, from previous turn. The Germans actually got a good die roll, and that wound up uh, going into the first turn of summer. Uh, so when uh, material shortages uh, marker is removed from the turn track, you put it in the strategic warfare box. That's going to hurt uh, the Allies' DRMs quite a bit. And then we rolled the die. Well, so here's the thing. Um, I rolled a one. And if the political die roll modifiers apply, it would have been a minus one anyway. So uh, we got a military takeover. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, um, first of all, we get this uh, military takeover marker in the strategic warfare box. And what that, what that essentially means when we go to calculate our strategic, strategic stuff, um, it's basically like the Allies got an extra Axis strategic hex, which is going to further shift things in the Allied favor over the life of the game, and we can't, you know, that won't ever go away. And that, I guess that, like, the bomb plot against Hitler worked. They said, oh my gosh, we're, you know, the Germ you know, the Allies are not far from Munich. They're, they're surging up. Uh, all these defenses we built on the coast uh, are useless. The Allies are pushing from the south in good order. Um, we've made some terrible mistakes as the, the Germans. Uh, Hitler, you, you can't you can't be in charge anymore, I guess. <laughs> so military takeover. Um, the weird thing that this does is it puts truce markers in, which we haven't experienced yet. So basically, just to show... Up there on the posture boxes, we now have some negotiation markers there. What does that mean, Steve? Um, well, there's there's different levels of truce markers. Negotiation just means that, like, you can't enter the Zoc, new Zocs of enemy forces. You can still be next to the enemy that you're already next to, and you can still attack those guys. But you can't place new markers on units. You can't, um, like, support markers, air units and stuff. Uh, it kind of halts your ability to advance. And I believe we can, like, remove the negotiation marker. But we're going to essentially lose, like, a whole turn of, of progress, effectively, uh, to do that. Granted, um, I don't know that that's a huge deal because uh, we're going to have... Um, the ability to uh, probably get some forces like into France anyway. We can avoid Zox and just kind of get into a good position for when the truce ends. Um, but that's kind of it. So a really weird set of circumstances, kind of, I guess, an interesting ahistorical set of events that are coming about in, in part, I guess, because of what we've been doing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, military takeover has occurred. Hitler is out, uh, we presume, and that's going to affect things as we start heading into uh, the summer and will actually delay the Allies a bit here, which is just what the Germans need to try to get some of their support markers back. So kind of an interesting, I, I don't know, it's very interesting, like, okay, we're, we're about to run roughshod over the Germans and now, hey, Hitler died, hey, maybe we can negotiate our way out of this situation. Um, I'm going to have to double check the negotiation truce rules as we go into the next turn, because that's really going to matter for a lot of things. But this might give the Germans a chance, a reprieve, to do some defensive maneuvering of their own. Um, if we can... We are allowed to move units, I think, adjacent to enemy units if there's already a unit there, so we can continue... Um, we can continue our efforts in Norway. We can continue our immediate efforts in, you know, these main parts of the front, but it may limit our ability to make big exploitations or, or big landings somewhere um, because we can't, we can't get too close to the enemy in some circumstances. Really weird. 
we're going to cover all that and more in the next video, uh, which will probably cover summer and fall again in the next one. This was uh, winter, winter and spring. So yeah, next video, summer 44. We just finished up uh, the winter of 43 going to 44 and the spring of 44. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Keep gaming.